G'day and welcome. As you can see, the 100 mile per hour SR250 is pretty much complete. And today we're going to be replacing the clutch or servicing the clutch because uh, I've only read it in a, a few minutes and it's already slipping like crazy. So I'm going to have to investigate that. And the valves are starting to make a lot of noise, which has me concerned, but uh, we'll take a look at that as well. And because I'm going to be dropping the oil and opening the cases and stuff, I figured I might as well do a bit of a routine maintenance video. Um, today's a decent day and I love working outside so we're going to wheel out the tools and get stuck in. This is the, this is the best thing I know, I love working on bikes outside so, uh, so let's get stuck in. So let's get the oil drained and some people recommend warming up the bike to make the oil more viscous so it runs out easier. Um, I do that sometimes, but sometimes I can't be bothered starting the bike and I just like to let the oil drain out, especially if it's been sitting a long time. It means that all the oil has, has managed to run down from the head and the cylinder and everything, and it's collected here in the bottom in the sump. So there's sort of two ways of looking at it. Either you get the oil warm, pump it through the engine, and it should run out easier, but then you've got the oil all up in the head and the, the cylinder and everything. Or you think, oh, well, it's already drained out. It's all at the bottom there, so we can just be a bit patient with a thicker oil and let it run out. A word on the sump plug. Here's the stock one. And I've seen some of these so beat up because people use the wrong tools. Don't use uh, an open wrench or a ring spanner and don't use an adjustable wrench either. Get yourself the right socket. This will save you a lot of headaches and the next owner of the bike because you won't risk stripping this. And if you look closely, you can actually see that this is a Jadis custom oil sump plug, which has got a much larger purchase for the socket. So it's much longer and it's made from billet aluminium. So this will not break. Um, and then obviously we're working upside down. So righty tidy uh, is not righty tidy. It's righty loosey, uh, depending on where you're looking at the crescent. So I'm gonna open this up and let the oil slowly drain out. Be careful not to get the oil over your hand. That kind of sucks. So let's do that. And as you can see, I've got one of these uh, special oil drain containers so you open up down in the middle here oil drains into here captures all your oil and then you put the lid back on it's actually really nice uh, especially in this case now which i'll be reusing the oil because it's so fresh and filtering it back into the engine so i like i like these partic this particular setup I should have opened the oil outlet, uh, the air outlet. Looks pretty clean. And the magnets hasn't picked up anything of interest. That's good. It's another bonus of the custom Jadis oil sump plug. It's got a neodymium magnet in the bottom. So it'll pick up any metal filings. Right now, oftentimes when replacing the oil, you'll probably be replacing the oil filter as well at the same time. And on this bike, we've got the custom Jadis oil filter cover cooler installed, but uh, it's a very similar process to the stock one. Here's the stock one here, that's what it looks like. And what you do is you to help drain the oil from this like cavity in here, you want to crack open this to let air in through the top and back out the uh, oil screw at the bottom here and that will allow the oil in here to drain down into the sump so that you can really empty it before opening this. If you don't do that, the risk is that there'll be a, bit, a lot of oil left here and it can sort of pour out and make a mess. So that's what those two screws are for. So I'll do that on this version. And in this case here, we actually have the titanium version, the Jadis custom oil drain screw. And the reason we made it in titanium is because often this can get stripped on the stock bike. And when you're making a custom part, why not make it special? 
Uh, it's only it only costs a few euros extra to make and to sell to make it out of titanium than to make it out of steel. It looks a lot better and it's just kind of cool. So, and this can sometimes be quite stubborn. And in that case, I would use the impact driver. But because this engine's reasonably freshly assembled, I think I'll be able to get it loose with just the standard Allen, which I was able to. So if you back that out, it's going to open up the hole at the bottom of that and let the oil drain out down into the sump. So I'll let that drain for a little bit before taking it off. So let's take the cover off. And again, I think I'll be able to get this off with a standard Allen wrench. Loosen those. Back this guy all the way out. Yeah, as I said, there's the Jadis Custom Titanium Oil Drain Bolt. Comes with an O-ring as well, which is in the crankcases. Back these all the way up. And now this setup is somewhat different to the stock one because of the extension to the oil filter inside the cooler. So once I take this off, you'll be able to see and I'm not actually going to replace the oil filter because it's only got uh, about 20 kilometers on it. Um, and I'll run it for another few kilometers before I decide to change it at the same time as I change the original oil. So pulling this out here, you can see the setup with the stainless extension that goes together with the cooler. So that just sits on there and the seal is at the end here, which goes back into the engine. And if I pull that out, you can see it's actually stuck itself onto the oil filter, like that. But I mean, the only difference between this setup and the stock really is the fact that you need that extension. Otherwise you'd just have it like this going into the bike like that. Um, and I'll just give you a close up of the puddle of oil that I was talking about and why we have a uh, drain screw and a air screw at the top here is to be able to drain that pool of oil through that hole back into the sump. Um, and as I said, I'm just showing this because this is how you do an oil filter change. I'm not going to change the oil filter, so I'm just going to reassemble this and button it back up because soon I'll be taking off the entire uh, crankcase cover to get at the clutch. So for those of you that have the Jadis oil filter cover cooler, this is the way you put it in, standard direction, so this is always towards the engine. It goes down into the housing, the cover's got some guide pins down the bottom there so it can't sit in the incorrect position, it's always going to sit correctly. On with the adapter or extender, which seals against that seal, then you've got another seal here and that's what goes in here. And then, funnily, the o-ring is uh, actually stuck on the crankcase which is good, I'll just leave that there, otherwise it'll be sitting in this groove here. So let's try and place that in. We'll go end in first, and then place it in like this. I think that's got it. There we go. It can be a bit tricky, but what I'll do is I'll get these top ones started first. As I said, this is roughly the same process with the stock cover. It's just without that extension. So same order, same, uh, same orientation of the filter. Not forgetting our oil drain screw. Put that in there as well. You notice I haven't done any of these up yet. This is all just to get everything in place because I'll tighten them in a pattern, bringing everything closer to the crankcase uh, slightly so we get an even pressure on the seal. So we'll button this one up first, nice and tight, jump down to the bottom, nice and tight, and the third and final one, nice and tight, and then don't forget to do up the ear screw here, which usually uh, on this one has a very small gasket because we've got a small screw and on the standard one you also have a, a uh, copper gasket which seals there. So just button that up 
and we're done. So that's the oil filter change and then we'd actually fill it up with oil but we're going to do a few more processes before we get to that point. So to get at the clutch we're going to have to take the clutch side crankcase cover off and in some cases depending on your exhaust routing you'll have to remove the exhaust uh, as well if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on that but in this case I don't have to but I do need to remove the kickstart lever which is not stock um, so you wouldn't normally have to do this um, and the plug can stay in place but there's a few uh, earth contacts here that I'll have to be careful of as well. Um, these bolts are swapped out to titanium bolts um, and again I think I'll be able to loosen them with the standard allen but if they were tough like sometimes they are on the SR uh, you can use an impact driver and bash them out. Uh, I'll just give a quick demo of that for those of you who haven't seen. This is a very good purchase, um, one of the best tools to have in your toolbox. So say you're pissing around and trying to get the bolt out, it's usually a problem with the, um, the JOS bits, uh, they can sometimes be very stubborn to get out and if you can't get it out by hand you'd place it into the socket, preload it, so twist it and give it a good whack and it would come loose. As I said these have got no problem so I'll be able to do that by hand. So I'll go around and do that, loosen up all these, uh, but first remove the kickstart lever. Now I was a bit stupid, I did these two up here, I'll have, to un I'll have to undo those as well to be able to get the whole kit off, so I'll do that as well. Now when you're taking the cover off, it's important to note where the longer of the bolts are. So in the positions where there's dowling on the cover, um, the bolts are longer than the rest of them. So just make note of where those are positioned on the cover so that you remember when you put it back on, you use the correct lengths in the correct locations. Okay, now I've removed all the screws and I'm ready to take the cover off. A couple of things to keep in mind is there will always be a little bit of oil in the bottom of the crankcase, so it depends on how the bike is leaning, whether there will be oil that will drop out or not. And the other thing is if you do this carefully and the uh, gasket is reasonably fresh, you can reuse it. So be really careful taking it off because it's nice to be able to reuse that and not have to buy a new gasket and replace that every time because it, it can be quite a pain to scrape that off. So hopefully this one's so fresh that I'll be able to reuse it, but let's see. And to get it off, all the screws are out, it's now just hanging on by the friction or the bond of the gasket. There's a couple of pry points on the case. So I'm gonna slowly try to wiggle this cover off without damaging the gasket. can probably just tap it a bit as well around the perimeter. Here we go, coming loose. And don't forget we've got a couple of dowels here that we'll have to get loose. One each side. Here we go. Being careful the whole time. Just hope that gasket releases up here and down there. That'd be really nice to reuse that. always work. Just fiddling around with the gasket so I can see I can bring it with me when I pull off the cover. It's ideal. So after a bit of fiddling I think I've managed to keep this intact which is nice otherwise we other 
like I said, would just have to replace it. But uh, yeah, I think it's a bit of a split down there, but I think that'll be okay. I think that'll still seal. Okay, now we can see the clutch exposed, which is what I'm going to be working on. And today I'm going to be replacing both the clutch friction plates and wear plates and the clutch springs. Um, and Jadis has a kit for that. So these springs are 15% stronger than stock. And together with these stainless spaces here, it gives about a 20% extra um, pressure plate uh, pressure for the clutch. And that's to um, yeah make sure the clutch works with the extra power from the power kit that we sell. I'll get my trusty impact driver and remove these. careful removing these right at the end you can damage the threads if you don't put pressure on it because the spring's going to want to push the screws out there we go pull that out spring included And then we'll remove the clutch cover and the clutch plates, remembering the order of which way they came off. So you can, often I take a photo of how it looks before I take it apart so that I can see how to put it back together again. Um, this adjustment setup can stay on. As you can see, when I pull that off, it's just that setup there, which will adjust once we put the clutch back in place. So as you can see, this is a really fresh clutch. I don't know why it was slipping. It could be because of poor adjustment um, on my behalf, but just in case I've bought a re replacement clutch set, um, which I've had soaking in fresh oil for a couple of weeks now, because I've been meaning to do this for so long. But as long as you soak those in fresh oil for a couple of hours before installing, it should be okay. So we'll take these clutch plates out Keep them together like that. Sometimes I put a uh, cable tie around them to keep them in the same order that they went in, just for reference. Sometimes on a worn clutch basket, these edges here will be jagged. Um, and if they're jagged, you'll probably need to replace your entire clutch basket, but these are smooth, so that's okay. Yours will probably be smooth as well. Uh, so now it's time to put the clutch plates back on. Starting with a friction plate. This is going to drop oil everywhere, but we'll clean it up afterwards. Next one. Next one. Now, I thought this was going to be the XT six plate clutch, uh, but I realized that it's not enough to just buy the friction plates because uh, it's they don't seem to be any thinner. It must, must be these intermediate plates here that uh, are thinner so that you have room for six plates rather than five. Uh, so I don't know how successful this installation will be, if the clutch will hold. I might have to look up getting the thinner in, um, intermediate plates as well. But let's see. It's only one way to find out. Now it's time to put the clutch cover back on. And it goes on only one way. There's actually an arrow here that lines up with an arrow on the cage. Um, so let's see if I can see that because all the splines have to line up like I can't see it but I mean it's pretty uh, it's pretty obvious once it goes in if it goes in all the way not that one not that one 
Not that one, fuck, last try. There it is. So there's only one way you can put that back on. And then in the Jadis Stronger Clutch Spring Kit, we've got these stainless spacers, and we put them on first, and there's one for each pillar. So we'll put those in place. And then we'll get our new springs, and there's no orientation for those. They just go in like that, like that, like that. And start the screws if you can. So get those started. And then we'll do these up one at a time. Nice and tight. So, now that's completely assembled. And another thing I figure I should mention now is because this engine's so special, um, your engine will actually look quite different because um, you will have the starter clutch assembly here and the starter spline here with a chain on here. Whereas I have a, that's just off camera, whereas I have a plug here in the crankcase and I have a custom machined part here in the way instead. So I've actually turned down the, um, uh, the, the starter clutch. Now we want to adjust the pre-adjustment and we will need to get a 10 mil wrench and a JIS, JIS screwdriver and loosen that off like that. So adjusting this adjuster nut here um, is a bit of a balance between adjusting the um, adjustment bolt down where the cable connects to the clutch and then up on the handlebar as well. So you want to set those in so that there's a little bit of adjustment left in those and then adjust this last uh, because this is obviously the hardest to get at. You want to make sure that that's right. Okay, so let's just look at this. You can see I've got a little bit of adjustment left in the clutch setup, in and out. Down here, I've got a little bit of adjustment left here behind the nut, in and out. And you want this to be movable. It's not wanting to focus for me, but you can see that that's movable. And then we come back to our adjustment nut here, and you'll see once I screw on this how much um, adjustment you have down here. And that's why you should adjust this before putting the engine case back on. So let's just see if I can get both in the shot. So, see if I can wiggle this. You can see by wiggling that, it wiggles this down here because they're connected. So I have a little bit of play in here. And what I want to do is I want to screw this all the way in until the play stops. So now that's really tight, I can't move this lever here. And I want to back that off a half turn, like that. And then I get that little bit of play back. And then once I've got that, I'll put my spanner on here, screw in there, because I want to hold the position of this, and I will do up the lock nut. And that's exactly where I want this to be tightened. That's going to be the perfect amount of play. If I can, let's see. Yeah, so I've got that nipped up, and there should be a little bit of play in there. So you can see that there. I have a little bit of room back and forth on that lever, you can just see in the background there. And that's nicely adjusted. That means that once I uh, want to get adjusting the clutch once the cover's on, I can do that very successfully just by adjusting this bolt here and the, and the uh, bolts up on the handlebar rather than having to open this up and do it down here. So yeah. And the reason you want this little bit of slack here is because that means that the 
springs have bottomed out and you've got full clutch engagement. So it's important that you have that slack there. If you don't have the slack, then the clutch is not closing or, or, or tight enough, so to speak. Okay, now as I said, it's a shame I couldn't install the full XT250 clutch kit, but I think that's because of the plates, as mentioned, they're too thick on the SR250 to be able to get six friction plates on. Um, that might be, have to be an investigation for another time. But I've got this back together now, and it's time to put the uh, crankcase cover back on place. And uh, I'm lucky because the gasket is in place quite well, which is nice. So I'll just be cleaning up the edge here and adding some fresh oil to it so it seals nicely. Uh, a tip if you have replaced the gasket is to keep it in place, you can pl lightly place some oil around the edge of it and hope that the oil sort of sticks the gasket in position as you're wiggling it and placing it on the engine again. Um, and just be careful putting it in place and get the, uh, the dowel pins, the guide pins right as they engage with the bosses here on the cover. And uh, let's, uh, let's try and put this on. Nice. That went on pretty well. Much better than expected, actually. Um, and as mentioned, if you're replacing the gasket, you may, this may be more troublesome. Um, but just take your time and be patient and see if you can get the gasket to stick to the cover uh, cover beforehand. Uh, so that's a, a nice trick if you can get it to work. So now I'll put all the bolts back in place and I will do them up in a crisscross pattern, making sure that uh, the longer ones go in the correct homes. And as I do that, I'll put the uh, oil filter and oil filter cover back in place as well. Now I've got all the bolts in place, um, finger tight. I'm going to nip them up, as mentioned before, in a crisscross pattern, roughly. I don't really follow any pattern for this. I just sort of, yeah, plan it up, down, left, right, so forth. So now that everything's in place, I'm going to button it up and put the kickstart lever back in place. Now we've got everything back in place, it's time to fill up with oil, but don't forget to put the oil sump plug back in place. And I'll give a close up of doing that because uh, I wanna make a, a call out to uh, any home mechanics. So putting the sump plug back in place, this is the order of assembly. 
We've got the gauze with the seal pointing upwards down into the spring and the spring into the guide ribs on the plug. And remembering we're working upside down, so we're going to thread it in the right way. Push the plug, plug up into place and this can be a bit tricky because it's under tension but try really hard not to cross thread the threads so tension and then do it up finger tight if you can and you can get it finger tight if you can with the wrench or socket I mean yep now comes the real advice um, when doing this back up only ever use a socket that is the exact right size which is in this case 19 millimeters don't use any other tool and preferably almost a necessity almost a must because I mean, I've been working on these bikes for a long time and I still don't have the, the feeling to get this right. So I really recommend anyone working on bikes at home get a um, torque wrench. And I'll, put the, I'll post the values in the description of the video. But this is really important for doing this up correctly without stripping threads. Because if you strip threads on this, it's almost irreparable. I mean, there's no helicoils in this size. You'd have to take it to a machinist and blah 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 I mean it'll, it'll be an engine out of the frame job and just it's a nightmare I've had a couple of friends that have bought old bikes where the previous owner has stripped this thread and it's just been a nightmare so really take care doing this up For first of all don't don't get it on a cross thread and second of all once you do it up do it up with the right torque setting with a torque wrench preferably so now we're getting a bit tighter. There we go. Now, there's a V8 in the background. Now, listen for this. Tighter, tighter, there it goes. So it's actually much less than what you would expect. And that's tight, that's all buttoned up. And if I were doing that by hand, I might be inclined to do it even tighter, which would be, you know, to put too much stress on the threads. So keep that in mind. And the final step, now that we've got the sump plug back into place and torqued up to specification, it's time to fill up with oil. It's a boring process, it's pretty straightforward, so I won't film that. Um, but there's two different values they give in the manual. One uh, is a, a volume or an amount uh, without a filter change, and the other one is with a filter change. And with the filter change, there's obviously slightly more oil. And then also, if you actually have the Jadis uh, oil cooler cover, you'll need to... Um, have even more oil but I'll list those in the description and if you want to see more of this you can actually go to the uh, 100 mile per hour SR250 first start video which I'll have a link as link to as well so I'm going to put oil back in here clean this up because it's a bit messy now with oil all over the place and then get ready for the next step of the maintenance uh, schedule one last thing that's important to do after changing the oil uh, and or filter is to check that you have oil flow to the head and you do that um, with this check bolt here which means you loosen this slightly um, don't screw it out just loosen it slightly start the engine and then back this screw out pull it out slightly and then you should be able to see oil flow through out here and you can you can put rags all around here so that oil doesn't spill everywhere but what you want to see is oil pouring out of here and then as soon as you see oil shut the engine off so that you don't spew oil all over the engine um, and that's just to check that you actually have flow after doing the um, oil change and filter change so don't forget to do that as well i'll do that off camera because it's kind of messy and not very exciting unfortunately i've sort of run out of time today i'm sort of running out of daylight and i need to start getting on to doing some other things um, so I have to break this video up into two parts. The first part we've done uh, what we've seen so far and the next part I'll look at the cam chain tension and the valves adjustment and there's a couple other things we can check as well that are not as important but um, I'll show you the process for that anyway. So uh, stay tuned for part two. Cheers for joining today and happy wrenching and happy riding.